How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student, and today we're going to be talking about how to reduce pain with intramuscular injections when you're on hormone replacement therapy. This is a common question I get from a lot of friends who are trans that are doing some form of hormone replacement therapy in order to medically transition as part of their gender affirmation. But we know that injections suck, injections hurt, some people have legitimate phobias Phobias when it comes to injections. So one way we can mitigate some of those anxieties is to reduce pain. And for everyone, I think having less pain is just a great thing overall. We also want to address the big elephant in the room when it comes to healthcare access is that injections tend to be the cheaper option when it comes to any form of hormone re replacement therapy and the option that's most often covered by insurance. Unfortunately, that's the state of the world right now in the United States. I mean, I could go off about the American healthcare system and how it really doesn't benefit patients for the most part and makes patients' lives harder. But yeah, most people that are on some form of hormone replacement therapy are on the intramuscular variant of that hormone replacement therapy. I mean, I started off doing intramuscular injections and I still use needles because it's the cheapest. It's like 15 bucks a month for me. And now I've switched to subcutaneous, but every now and then I switch it up and like a good intramuscular injection. So here are the three most evidence-backed methods for reducing pain with intramuscular injections. In a recent meta-analysis that was published around three to four years ago, they looked at 15 articles that talked about intramuscular pain and how to reduce intramuscular pain with injections. And the top three methods are, number one is the manual pressure method, number two is the, is the Z-Track method, and number three is the double needle method. And I'm going to be explaining those three methods to you right now. So for the first method, the manual pressure method, what they found is that a lot of studies show that if you apply pressure to the area that you're going to eject for 10 seconds before you actually do the injection, it can greatly reduce pain. And the way that happens is because it allows the nerves of that area that you're going to inject to become a little bit less sensitive because you've applied that pressure. I mean, if you think about it, whenever someone's trying to bother you, maybe in high school or middle school this happened to you, but your friend is tapping on your shoulder, just to, just to annoy you and they're tapping and tapping and all of a sudden you don't feel it as much. It doesn't bother you as much. So that's basically the logic behind the manual pressure method. You press on the injection site for 10 straight seconds before you inject and your the nerve fibers in that area will get a little bit desensitized, which will cause pain to be less. The next method is called the Z-Track method. I feel like this method is the most hardest to learn if you are not in the medical field. So it's really important if you want to learn this method is to go to your doctor and ask them to demonstrate it for you before you even attempt it yourself. I mean, all the videos that I'm making, it's not personal medical advice, it's general medical knowledge. And I learned the Z-Track method with my nurse at my primary care provider. But uh, here's a little diagram of what it looks like. What you do is you, before you inject to the site, you push the skin a little bit to the side and then you inject and then you take out the needle and then you push the skin back to where it was. What that causes is that it causes whatever hormone you're injecting into your muscles to stay where it's supposed to stay. It's not going to leak back out. This is also a huge method that has been promoted for people who have trouble keeping their solution in their injection site because the injection site leaks out because if you don't use the Z-Track method, it creates a straight line between where you punctured your skin to your muscles. So some, some of that will leak out regardless. So the way it reduces pain is that some people are, uh, are actually like their skin is irritant to the compound of the hormone and the other byproducts when you deliver the injection. So when it leaks back out a little bit, it will irritate the skin around it, causing inflammation and increasing pain. So when you do the Z-Track method, it keeps all the medication where it's supposed to be in your muscles without leaking out, reduces irritation, reduces inflammation, thus reducing pain. 
And lastly is the double needle method. I personally have used the double ne needle method for the last three years that I've been taking testosterone. I swear by it, it's helped me so much with regulating pain with needle in injections. And what that is, is that you use two different needles for drawing and another needle for injecting. Yes, it gets costly a little bit because you're using two needles per injection, but it will save you a lot of pain. So this is a diagram of a needle that's been used more than once. You'll see that there's micro abrasions that happen in the needle once you've used it, even, even once. And those micro abrasions, your skin can feel it and it hurts. I have used one needle for a while to both draw and inject and it hurt so, so bad. But then I switched to the double needle method and the pain has gotten a lot more manageable and a lot easier to handle. So what I do is I use a wider 16 gauge needle, it looks like this, to draw my testosterone from its vial. And then I use a 23 gauge, longer and thinner needle to inject into my body. So I'm using two different needles to draw and to inject and it keeps those micro abrasions from happening at the needle tip, making it a smooth injection into my skin, into my muscles so I can deliver it and pull it out and it causes less pain. I swear by this method the most out of the three methods that this specific study looked at because I have personally felt the pain when I've used the same needle to draw and to inject and a lot less pain when I use two different needles. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I'll link to the meta-analysis paper down below so you can get to the link to the DOI so you can read the article yourself. There is a paywall, but I'm sure there are ways for you to access it for free, whether it be your institution that you are attending or some other methods. I'm not gonna say anything about that, but I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other advice on how to make needle injections less painful, please feel free to comment down below so we're sharing and spreading knowledge to all trans people and spreading the gift of equitable trans care um, to the entire world. I hope you like this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something out of it. I hope you'll share it with someone that may benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily shenanigans and what I'm doing with my life. And I'll see you on the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.